Well, uh, thank you. So the, the challenge set to us by Wayne and Peter uh, to reflect on temporalities in ethnographic museums is daunting. And there are many ways that one could tackle the issue. Uh, and one of them is how do museums deal with the tensions between the past-oriented and future-oriented aspects in their work and, and missions. So museums are associated with the past, but their mission is also uh, oriented to the future. They have the mission to preserve the collections for future generations and uh, also making a relevant discourse for today. So I would would be more interested to single out two questions. Uh, one is by taking up the Malinovskian notion of the past in the present, uh, which I think is much more productive than the notion of memory, which has become current in academic and public discourses, at least in, in, in France, uh, since this anthropology of the past in the present attracts attention to the multiplicity of forms of presence of the past in our contemporary world. Uh, it's not only in, 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 in discourses and histories, but also reconstitutions, monuments, categories, languages, eating practices, and, and, and so forth. So uh, the, the question is, is, how do ethnographic museums confront the multiplicity of the forms of presence uh, of the past, and especially uh, the notion of, of colonial legacies, which I see as being part of the present and not of, of, of the past? And, and the second question is, uh, how can museum represent uh, the, the, the contemporary? And here I take represent uh, in the double sense of uh, evoking, picturing, displaying something that is not physically present uh, here, and the temporal sense of making it part of our present. So there is a, a kind of a, a double challenge here, the presence of the past and the presence of the contemporary. And I will be using as an entry point uh, a recent case, which is the Paris uh, Museum of Man, which has been re-inaugurated last month by the French president of, of the Republic after extensive works of, of renovation. Uh, because the issue of time is central in the explicit project of this museum, which is the evolution of, of mankind. Here you see the, the propaganda, uh, which is man is evolving, so is uh, his or, or her uh, a museum. And uh, uh, it proposed to present uh, the natural and cultural history of man. The, the very communication is based on this idea of evolution, of, of change, and the exhibition project is uh, explicitly organized around three questions which are precisely uh, in a temporal succession. Where do we come from? Who are we? Uh, where are we going to? And the, the museum is, is, is explicitly trying to answer these questions in the gallery of, of man. Uh, so the, it, it's an interesting uh, way of articulating past, present, and future uh, in order to uh, respond to who is this us, which in, is, in this case is the, the human uh, uh, species. So while today, the, today's museum cannot really be described as an ethnographic museum, especially because it has been stripped of its historical ethnographic collections, uh, the bulk of which extra-Europeans went to the uh, Musée uh, du Quai Branly. Here are some, some pictures of the inauguration of the 1938 uh, Musée du Quai Branly, uh, of which I will talk la later in the external and inside view, in internal views, and the, uh, which were the extra-European, and the uh, European ones joined the French collection of the uh, ATP to go to Marseille at the new Museum of uh, the Civilization of Europe and the Mediterranean. Uh, so it is rather a post-ethnographic museum, uh, the Musée de l'Homme, but it is using ethnographic collections uh, in its uh, uh, exhibition. But before uh, and, and, of course, the qu question is the, the question of historicity and the relationship to its predecessors at uh, the same place, the first Musée de l'Homme, inaugurated in 1938, and before the Musée of Ethnography of the Trocadero, which was created in 1978. But before taking you to the Musée de l'Homme, I would like to quote the words uh, of a, a museum professional trying to reflect on the issue of time in ethnographic museums and the problem for the traditional presentation of discrete cultures. The least what we can do in the showcase is containing only the purer obsolescent obsolete cultures is to state clearly what labels 
by, by labels what periods of times the exhibits are actually known to cover. The public would then have no ground for complaining of being misinformed about contemporary conditions. Uh, and in any case, I would urge that by whatever means it is done, we should henceforth deliberately aim at the inclusion of cultures for culture contact as a specific item or feature in the repertoire of our ethnographic museums. So if I had time, I would ask you to guess at the date at which this statement was made. And of course, the vocabulary sounds indeed a bit uh, obsolete, but some of you might be surprised to learn uh, that these words were actually the concluding remarks of the 1942 uh, presidential address uh, by Herbert Brownholtz, who was uh, then president of the Royal Institute of Great and, and Ireland, and who was a, also a keeper at the British Museum, who was in charge of the ethnographic collections. What is interesting here uh, is that this, what is the, what this museum problem, uh, the problem of, 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 of uh, showing uh, and informing about the real state of, of the uh, um, showcases. Uh, for Brownholz, uh, many museums, uh, I quote, in their desire to illustrate only so-called pure native cultures, were really giving a rather heterogeneous, if not distorted, picture. Too often, the picture would tend to be a composite one in which past and present were incongruously blended, owing to the fact that the process of collecting and assembling the various items of material culture from a particular tribe or region might have been spread over a lengthy period of time during which the arts and crafts were undergoing change and development. So this passage is interesting because it shows a degree of consciousness of the artificial and problematic character of many ethnographic displays linked to the erasure of time and especially the erasure of the process of collecting the artifacts and bringing them into an assemblage uh, within the museum. Uh, and so this, the problem uh, for uh, Brownholz is really this mixing up of, of times, the, the incongruous, incongruous blending of past and, and present. Actually, it's Brownholz was here drawing on what was then becoming a possible new direction in British anthropology, uh, what Malinowski had called the anthropology of culture contact, especially in his preface to the collection of essays published by the uh, International Institute of African Languages and Culture, called Methods of Study of Cultural Contact in Africa, published a few years before in 1938. So it's not here the place to uh, ponder the merits and defects of this approach, which has been done amply elsewhere. But one reason to bring it here is also that it qualifies, in a way, uh, Johannes Fabian's famous structure on anthropology as denying coevalness. Uh, while, of course, this uh, uh, has been a very helpful and productive uh, text, as this conference, among other uh, shows, uh, uh, for the sake of the argument, uh, it is stylizing the complexity of the history of anthropology, silencing counter possible counter-narratives, and especially all these attempts at understanding the, the contemporary changes in Africa, which were the crest of the research program of the International Institute of African Languages and Cultures uh, on its five years plan of research, financed by the Rockefeller Foundation in the early 1930s. So it's, it's interesting because this alternative uh, current largely went into oblivion, in part because of the sudden death of Malinowski in Yale in 1942, uh, but, but still represented a kind of alternative uh, development uh, in anthropology. So what I find interesting here is that whereas we tend to be critical of our predecessors uh, based on the exhibitions they have left us, they were sometimes acutely aware of some of the difficulties and dilemmas we, we think to have found out about recently. And, and Brownholz goes on to discuss uh, various exhibition strategies in order to account for the discrepancy between ethnographic exhibitions in museums and what was going on in the real world at the same time. And he asked, how are we then to fill uh, our ethnographical showcases with a mixed pack of bar clothes and bicycles? And I said, well, no, it, it, it would be, it would hurt our sensibility. Uh, so the, the, the problem, again, is um, also the, the, the problem that we have to, if, if the museum is trying to address the contemporary world, it has to address the fact that the contemporary world is constantly changing. So this 
makes it difficult for the museum to be contemporary because, as he says, um, a major difficulty would still arise from the rapid changes now taking place in primitive cultures. Well, we can take out a world primitive, but then uh, the, 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 the question would still be, uh, in many ways, actual. Uh, they would render it almost impossible to keep the picture absolutely up to date. It would never exactly correspond to the contemporary facts and would need to be constantly revised in order to conform even approximately. And this, what we could call the Braunholz dilemma, uh, seems to be quite an early formulation of the impossible museography of the contemporary, uh, which has proven an insoluble problem to many ethnographic museums. Okay. So now uh, let's go to the uh, Musée de l'Homme. Um, and uh, so it, it was inaugurated, as I said, by the French president. Uh, uh, and uh, he, 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 he quoted the fact that the, this museum was representing uh, universalism and that universalism was the gift of France to, to, to mankind. So the museum was uh, set up initially in 1938, and again, it was repeated. Uh, the interesting thing is that the continuity between the initial project and the 2015 project was constantly repeated uh, in, uh, in the reintegration, in, in the public messages, and in the very uh, installation of, of a link between the past and, uh, and the present. And, and basically, uh, uh, according to François Hollande, the message of the museum was that behind apparent differences, there is only one human species, and that race uh, uh, is a fiction. And it was a, especially a reference to recent public controversy about a French politician talking uh, 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 about races. So the idea of the museum is to emphasize the unity of mankind beyond a superficial difference. And here is a way to do that. It's uh, the entrance welcome wall, an installation by the Cameron-born artist Pascal Martin Tailloux, to which I'll come back later, which uh, uh, illustrates the diversity of humanity through the multiplicity of languages. So the, in, in the section, uh, first section, who are we, uh, there is something about man as a physical being. And uh, we have here a, a dichotomy between uh, the section which is uh, along the wall, uh, where, which is uh, illustrating, displaying the diversity of, of, of human cultures. Uh, this body transformations or adornments uh, are both naturalized through the comparison with the behavior of animal species and presented as being superficial. Um, here. Uh, here, the, 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 it's the human uh, body between nature and, and, and culture. And on the other side, uh, there is, we have the presentation of the essential unity of the human species, uh, done, interestingly enough, uh, with physical unity by using ancient uh, medical devices anatomic waxes uh, from the 18th century. So there is kind of a double move of, of historicizing and recycling uh, ancient objects. It's anatomic waxes were considered to be among the hidden treasures uh, of the museum, in part because of their aesthetic value. So it was decided to display them. And here, uh, this is the brain, and the, the, the theory about the evolutionary brain is illustrated uh, by a wax uh, from uh, the early uh, uh, 18th uh, uh, century. Um, another part of the uh, opposes the diversity of uh, the uh, ways of conception of the world, explicitly drawing upon the work of Philippe de Scola, who is a professor of anthropology at the Collège de France, uh, especially his major book, Par de la uh, Nature et Culture, uh, where he proposes a fourfold approach to cosmology. So you have here uh, the, 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 a, a showcase uh, which is presenting these four ways of. Uh, uh, of organizing the, the, the world. So here you have the naturalist approach, uh, which is characteristic for, of, of Europe, man and the spirits of nature, uh, um, uh, which is on the, based on the, the opposition between nature and culture, man as a master and the owner of nature, and the, the power of science. Uh, here you have uh, the notion of the world in miniature, which is Asia, the, the, the Chinese thought. Here uh, you have the totemic uh, approach in, uh, in Oceania. And, and here, uh, finally, based on Africa, the man and the spirits of nature, uh, illustrated mostly by African material. So, uh, which is the idea of a continuum between uh, different species. Uh, Descola's model. Sorry. What is this series showing? 
well, this, this series is showing the variety of uh, basic conceptions of the world. That's the idea of throwing... Who's basic conception? Well, of you, of you, in you, mankind, supposedly. That's the idea. That's the, 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 so the, we have, you have four basic models of organizing the world, which are displayed here. And uh, based on this color's model, which is already an effort at generalizing and abstracting, uh, and it's bordering on uh, uh, essent and essentialization. But here, it's, it's even uh, restricted in a small showcase, uh, and it's difficult not to suggest that people uh, inhabit completely distinct worlds, especially since there is a kind of equivalence between continents and uh, modes of thought. So you have the, there is a completely ha historical models, the Western naturalistic approach, and, 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 and each one is linked to, uh, to a continent. So America is absent here, whereas uh, Descola made his uh, fieldwork among the Atra of uh, Peruvian Amazonia, but was replaced by uh, Africa. But it's a strange vision of an uh, essentialized uh, continental uh, ontology. And on the opposite side, oh, sorry, yes, it was too, uh, you have the, the, the brain to think the, 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 the world, uh, uh, which is, again, at the, there, is, there is variety at the cultural level, there are many conceptions, but at the fundamental biological level, there is only one brain. So it's a cosmological statement about the stability of human nature as guaranteed by science. And there is a tension between the fact that the scientific position is presented as European and the fact that this is the very uh, organizing conception for the whole museum. So let me... Uh, say a, a brief uh, word about this central uh, piece, which is the flight uh, of, of the busts, uh, which is basically recycling uh, busts which came from the Phrenological Museum of Dumoutier and also artistic busts by Charles Cordier to present the diversity of mankind. And here it's a very interesting thing because there is a tension between some efforts as historicizing uh, by uh, showing uh, the uh, cephalometer uh, by Dumoutier, also uh, with uh, some uh, uh, explanations here about the, the technique of casting, uh, showing uh, this uh, figure, or even sometimes by addressing the careers of individual persons uh, like uh, Said Enkes, who uh, was a slave from Sudan, was uh, brought to Paris, and whose picture uh, was, was cast was presented in 1848, corresponding with the, with the moment of the abolition of slavery. So, but these this historicizing attempts are strike, strikingly uh, uh, in conflict with the whole idea that you're trying to uh, explain the diversity of humankind, uh, and here, uh, which reminds of, of former ways of presenting diversity of mankind, so for the exhi colonial exhibition, or even at the Museum of Man of 1938, where you have the presentation of the various uh, human races. Um, okay. So I'll skip the part about the prehistory, uh, which is, uh, uh, in fact, that the way where the past is, is mostly this long past, this long human past. And here again, you have the kind of conflict between the attempts of, at historicizing, a scientific discourse, and aesthetics of uh, curiosity, uh, which is explicitly uh, brought out in the presentation. So and it, it's, it's uh, and finally, a few words uh, about the, um, uh, but the, the way to present uh, the, the present, which is the idea of presenting uh, globalization uh, by uh, using this kind of, of recourses, uh, neo-historical, neo-realistic uh, devices uh, like this, this bus, and also presenting uh, the uh, globalization, uh, which is at the Basically, whereas you, one would think of having a crescent uniformity, actually you still have a diversity of forms in the use of materials. And here we are strictly, it's strictly one of the uh, advices given by Braunholz in 1942, that is to use the diversity of materials the way they're being reused uh, in other uh, places. And also, uh, for instance, here with the, the way uh, uh, cellular phones are also being diverse in the world, and, uh, and uh, uh, find Finally, uh, with um, uh, the uh, diversity of uh, identity movements related to politics uh, uh, in, uh, in, in the world. So I 
I'll have to rush to, to finish. There's also the strategy to call the contemporary artists. The, how will we address contemporaneity? Let's call a contemporary artist. And it's, it's, it's a strategy uh, because at the same time, it is the museum, but it's also there is a claim of irresponsibility. The artist, we all know, is irresponsible. So whatever he says, it's not the museum which, which says that. It's, uh, uh, it's, it, it's his uh, own point of view, his freedom as an artist. So here, as with the, another work by Pascal Martin Taillou, Fetiche Revenoir, which is a critique of the essentializing of uh, the uh, uh, Africans and of the blacks uh, in this uh, uh, magazine, which was very important uh, for contemporary art. But at the same time, which is transferred as a kind of fetish, I think the allusion got lost on most of visitors because it, it's, it's on one corner of the museums and it doesn't really make it explicit. So at the same time, you can say there is a kind of a critique. The critique is there, but nobody is really able to, uh, to, to get it. So I am forced by uh, my friend Wayne to, to, to stop. Uh, um, but uh, I think what I wanted to, uh, to, to, to say finally was the um, absence of an addressing in these various museums, be it the Museum of Man, be it the Musée du Quai be it uh, the uh, Musée uh, for the History of uh, uh, Immigration, which was the former palace of the colonies for the designed for the 1931 exhibition, of addressing the issue of colonial legacies. Uh, there is no museum addressing the colonial past in itself. So this, this presence of the past, which is in fact present and organizing all these museums, doesn't really uh, get to be addressed, except in very uh, small uh, attempts, in very marginal attempts in all these museums. And I think it's one of the problems with these uh, uh, uses of the past. Uh, thank you.